Tonight, I, I'm just going to talk to you again about uh, authority and power. Our authority and the power that we have as sons and daughters of Almighty God. And I really think that it's time for the church. Well, I don't think it. I know that it's time for the church and for Christians to grow up. Now, we know that they will always be babies. They will always be young converts. And, uh, but you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that God changes the time and He shortens the time. So stuff that would, that would have taken six, uh, uh, six years is going to take, uh, uh, say, a year. Things that took a year is going to take six months. Things that took six months is going to take three weeks. Things that, that took three weeks is going to take a day. So it's time to grow up and it's time to grow up very quickly and become mature because there's a job that we need to do and that is to rule and reign on this earth. Amen. Right. Take your Bibles. I want to start off with the book of Genesis chapter 1. And uh, so uh, make as though you don't know what I'm sharing. All right. This is, this is how you get new revelations or deeper revelations and... Uh, is if you listen to the word, this is the way that I read the word. I can read the same scripture that I've been reading for 25 years. I can read, read that same scripture again and find new hidden mysteries in that very same scripture because I open my mind to it and I don't get stuck because, oh, but I know this. I can quote it in my sleep. And it, so have an open mind and listen with your spirit. All right, Genesis chapter 1. Now this is about... God, where God created, you know, creation and stuff. So, but I want you to jump to, to verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. In other words, let them be like us. You've got to get this. Let us make man in our likeness. In other words, Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let us make man that are going to be just like us. Are you getting that? Just like us. It's, it's, it's time for you to begin to understand and know and get the revelation of who you are in Christ. Who you are. I know that we say, I'm a son of God and, you know, and... Uh, 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 I'm a king, I'm a ruler, I'm a what? But, but get this revelation about, let us make man in our likeness that is just like us. Let's carry on reading. And let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. In other words, radha. Let them have, that is to be able to tread down. In other words, and, and you've got to remember this, let let the things be, uh, the following things that I'm going to, sh that, that God spoke about. Let it be under their feet. Let them tread upon it. Not like in this destroying it or anything like that, but let it be under the, their feet. Let them rule over it. Let them reign over it. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. Over all the earth, not just some of the earth, not just a portion of the earth, let those, come on, get this, let those who carry our image, God, who carries, who carry our image, let them rule over the fish of the sea, the cattle, and over all the earth, them that carry our image. Let them rule over all the earth. Then I actually drew an arrow in my Bible connecting chapter 2, another verse, uh, uh, to that verse in verse 26 that said over all the earth. Now we know that in chapter 2, in verse 8, God made the garden of Eden. He planted the garden eastward and uh, of Eden, and there he put man. So he took and he put man in that garden. And in that garden, now go, verse 11, in that garden, 
the name of the first, they will reverse the Pishon. It's the one which skirts the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. But Dilium, the onyx stones are there in that land. So listen now what he said. He said, let us make man, let them have dominion over all the earth. Then he took man and he placed man in the garden where the gold is good. So man was supposed to rule and reign over the garden where there is gold. So this is the purpose. Get the purpose. The purpose of man was to rule over all the earth. And in that earth there was placed gold, gemstones, Bedillium, which is like a, 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 a fragrance, like frankincense, it's a spice. And uh, so he says that, let them rule over the earth. But in that earth, there's going to be gold, there's going to be silver, there's going to be onyx stones, there's going to be bedillium, and they need to rule over it, subdue it. Then in verse 50, so that's the purpose of man. Then in verse 15, he said, then the Lord took the man, and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. In other words, to tend it is to enslave it. So in other words, earth is supposed to work for man. But something is upside down in this world. Man is working to make a living from the earth. When the earth is supposed to be blessing man. And Things need to be put into right order again. Things need to be put back in God's order. The devil is a, 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 a creator of disorder, of chaos. God is a God of order. And God's order is, is I'm going to put the man... He's going to rule and reign over all the earth, and he's going to tend this earth. In other words, he's going to enslave it so that the earth is going to take care of him. The earth is going to work for him. But now man is working and toiling. Man is enslaved to the earth instead of the earth being enslaved to man. And keep it. Now that word keep it means to guard it, to protect it, and to keep it. So Adam and Eve were supposed, were supposed to guard what God gave them. But now we know what happened is the devil came and the devil lied to them. The devil started sowing doubt. And that's one of his main weapons that he uses is doubt. So he started sowing doubt in the hearts of the people and so forth. Now go to uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'm going to show you something. Deuteronomy chapter 8. A little bit further on. And go to verse, go with me to verse, to verse 3. We, we're going to read from verse 3. All right. But even though, before we read it, let me just say this. Even after Adam and Eve gave up the gold, they gave up, the bedelium, they gave up the jewelry, the jewels, the gemstones. They gave up the earth that was supposed to be a blessing to them. They gave it all up. God still showed mercy and grace to those that followed after Adam. Then God spoke to Abraham and he blessed Abraham. And we know that Abraham became wealthy and was blessed. And uh, Isaac and Jacob... And, and even with Israel, when they moved out of Egypt, God had grace and mercy on them, and God still took care of them. All right? So now, here we are in, 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 in Deuteronomy, and now God is speaking to Moses. Now, verse 3, So we humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. In other words, they did not know what this manna was. That's why, that's what... That's what manna means. Manna means what is this? What? All right. That he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, 
but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Now, you heard me say this and quote this so many, many times and teach on this so many, many times, and you're going to hear this even more in 2024. All right? So we are not done with this yet. So here God is speaking to Moses, and God says to Moses, Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Now you need to understand this, because this is what's, what's taking you into your authority and to releasing the power that God has given us. All right? So here he says that man shall not live, but by every word that proceeds. So I want to find out what it is that God said. Because if I know what God said, if I know what it is that God proclaimed, what God declared, the promises that God spoke over my life, that sets the standard for my life. That sets the standard for your life. So anything that is lower than what God said is a lower form of life. Obviously, it's a lower form of life. And we don't want to be enslaved and submit to a lower form of life when God spoke some other stuff. One of the things that God said is you need to rule and reign over the gold, over the silver, over the bedelium, over, okay, but Vili doesn't say silver there. Oh, but the scripture does say the gold is mine, the silver is mine, the cattle on a thousand deals are mine. And when he says over all the earth, where do you find the silver? Where do you find the platinum? Where do you find the diamonds? Where do you find the opal? Where do you find the gemstones? In the earth. And God said, reign over all the earth. But now we've got Anglo and, Amer and the, the diamond mines and all the other mines and stuff. And the, and the corrupt people that are, you know, and they are now controlling everything. Are you with me so far? Right. So I want to know what God said. So God said. So I want to get to that standard, that level of life that God determined right from the beginning. And as I said on Sunday to the people that, was at the me that were at the meeting on Sunday, I said to them, every now and again I would interrupt and I would say, I'm setting you up for something. I'm setting you up for something. So listen carefully. I'm setting you up for something. You know, Ephesians 4 says, God gave apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pro you know, for the equipping of the saints until we all get to the same measure. To the standard height of Christ, to that same measure of Christ himself. The standard height of Christ's own perfection. I want to get you to that height of Christ's life. That is my job, is to get you there. How do I get you there? To show you the promises of God, so that you can determine your standard of life. Don't settle for anything less. All right? So now that he might make you known that man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Then in verse 7 he says, For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. You see, once again, God's grace and God's mercy. He's bringing them into a good land. Uh, verse 9, A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. You will lack nothing in this land. Jump to verse 18. Now listen to what God says. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you power, kuach, the force, the ability, the might, the power to get wealth. This has to happen because that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers. So in getting wealth back into the hands of the sons and daughters of Almighty God means we are settling for the covenant that God made with, with uh, the forefathers, with, with, with Isaac, with Jacob. And uh, with, with all those people, Moses and the Israel and, and, and David and whoever, we step into those promises. We're taking back those promises. And God says, I'm going to give you the power to get it back. 
It's in the wrong hands at this moment. But I'm going to give you the power to get it back. And this is where the church is lacking because the church is shying, shying away. Oh, many churches. Let me rephrase that. Many churches and many people with religious mindsets are shying away from getting the wealth back because they think it's, 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 it's greed. They think it's lusting after, after earthly stuff. It's earthly stuff. God said rule over all the earth. So what's your problem? God said rule over all the earth. Oh, that's all materialistic stuff. Yeah, it's made from the earth. Get hold of this stuff. It's going to come back into the hands of Almighty God. We're supposed to be the most wealthiest, most blessed people on the planet, man, on the face of this earth. Just before the broadcast, uh, my, my, my wife was watching a program, and uh, it, uh, I don't know what the name of the program is, but it's, it, it's, it's about, and it's not even overseas. It's in South Africa. It's about luxury listings, uh, uh, in, in, in million dollar listings or something like that in South Africa and there's a house in Bantry Bay that is up for sale for 65 million rand and you know what someone has the money to buy it there are actually people on the show that started looking at the house and wanted to buy the house and uh, 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 I didn't finish looking at it because now you know I'm busy with the program but uh, this, listen, the wealth is out there. The world is not poor. Let me tell you something. The world, wake up. The world is not poor. The wealth is just in the wrong hands. And many, many religious mindsets are too afraid to teach the people what it is that God said so that man can live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. They are too afraid to talk about wealth. They are too afraid to talk about riches. They are too... Why? I don't know. Because they are scared they're going to lose people because it might sound that they just want to get the people's money. No, I want to get you to a place where you can lay hold of the wealth so that you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God so that we can expand the kingdom of God on this earth because it takes money to expand the kingdom. It takes money to preach the gospel. It takes money for this broadcast. It takes even money to get souls into the kingdom because you need to train them, to equip them. We need building that we can have Bible schools. We need buildings where we can have conferences. We need, it takes money. Even Jesus had money. All right? And, 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 and don't argue with me. I didn't write the scripture. I didn't write Deuteronomy. And Deuteronomy is called the book of remembrance. That's what the word Deuteronomy means. The words of Moses or the book of remembrance. So listen to the book of remembrance. I'm going to give you the power to get the wealth back, man. I'm going to give you that power. Now go to Matthew chapter 4. Now there might be some things that are coming out tonight that didn't come out on Sunday. There might be some things that came out on Sunday that might not be coming out tonight. But in whatever way, you're going to be blessed by this word. Matthew chapter 4. Now this is Jesus. This is Jesus. You know this. I've taught him this so many times. Jesus in the wilderness. The devil comes to him. The devil is trying to tempt him. He's hungry. The devil shows up. And the devil says to him, turn these stones into bread. So Jesus says to the devil, for it is written, man shall not live, that's, that's Matthew 4, verse 4, it is written, man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy 8. And in Deuteronomy 8, to finish the chapter, you will find the verse that says, and I will give you the power to get well. Guess what? It is written. It is written. I'm going to give you the power to get wealth. Now, you know that in 
Proverbs 12, it says a man will be satisfied with good uh, by the fruit of his mouth. And Proverbs 13 says a man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. So in other words, your mouth determines your level of life, your lifestyle, your mouth. And I hear so many Christians and it say, oh, you know, the economy and all this kind of stuff. You know, that is, yeah, it's, it's been, it's difficult, you know, and, and all these negative things in it. Christians. And the word says you will eat by the fruit of your lips. It's going to determine what you're going to eat. In other words, how you're going to live. So here Jesus comes and he confronts the devil. He says, ah, oh, you don't. It is written, man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Now listen to this. A little bit further on in, in the Gospels, Jesus says this. He says, I do nothing unless I first saw it with my Father. I say nothing unless I first heard it from my Father. So whenever we read where Jesus is talking, and saying something, we can be sure that he heard it from his father. So if Jesus said it, it's not, oh, but that is Jesus. Jesus said it. No, I can still go to the scripture and say, every word that proceeds from the mouth of the father, because the father spoke it to Jesus, Jesus taught it, Jesus spoke it, Jesus declared it, so it's still the words of the Father. Because Jesus says, I do nothing unless my Father spoke to me about it. I say nothing unless my Father spoke to me about it. I do nothing unless my Father told me about it. You get the picture. So Jesus says to him, man shall not live but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Then the devil came and the devil, you know, took him up on the mountain and said to him, you know, jump off. Verse 8, they took him up to an high, on an high, exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now, when he showed the, Jesus their glory, he was showing Jesus the wealth of the kingdoms, the wealth. And he said to Jesus, if you fall down and you worship me, I will give you these kingdoms and their wealth. Now, at that stage, he, he had the right because of what Adam and Eve did. They gave him the right to the wealth. They gave him the right to the kingdoms that they were supposed to be ruling over all the earth. So now... He comes and he offers it to Jesus, but with a condition. Serve me and you can have it. But now Jesus already knows why he's on the earth. He knows that he's the last Adam. He knows he's on this earth to restore and to save that which was lost and to restore what the first Adam messed up. That's why he's called the last Adam. And please, if you're a preacher, I hear so many preachers talking about the second Adam. He was not the second Adam. He's the last Adam, which is the second Adam. But he's the last Adam. There's not going to be a third Adam and a fourth Adam. There's going to be no other Adam anymore. And his sole purpose, the sole purpose of Jesus Christ was not just to save man in man's lost condition. Because people were saved by the law in the Old Testament. We are saved by the blood of Jesus, by grace in the new. The sole purpose of Jesus was to reconcile everything, that is everything that's on the earth, and man who was supposed to be ruling over everything on the earth, back unto God, and give man who are created in God's image, he has to restore that image, so that man can be carriers of that image and once again exercise their authority and their rulership on this earth and reign and ru rule over everything and all the earth like it was supposed to be. That was the work that Jesus Christ had to come and die for. It is done. It is finished. 
is to reconcile everything back unto God and put man back in authority to rule and reign. But if the church don't teach this, you will remain poor, you will stay poor, you will just say, you know, and I, and I hear people say, and I'm going to say it again like I said so many times, you know, I just want enough, you know, to get by. I don't want to be very rich in it, you know. I'm happy where I am. That's a selfish person that says that because now you are not able to be a blessing for every good work. You are selfish because it's only about you and about your needs. How about being blessed so that you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God, be a blessing to a ministry, be a blessing to poor people, be a blessing to someone else because you have more than enough. You're living in the overflow. You are able to do that. You see, it's not just about you. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. That's why the devil tried to offer in the kingdom. But now we know in the book of Revelation, it says that, and, and, and uh, uh, what happened on the cross, is that the kingdoms of this world have become. It's not going to become. It's not one day in the future. When Jesus died, the kingdoms of this world became the kingdoms of his Lord and our Christ. That is what happened. So who does the kingdoms belong to now? It does not belong to the devil anymore. He thinks he's still in authority. He's not in authority. And this is what this teaching is about. So that you can know and understand some stuff. He's no longer in authority. He's no longer in power. He's got kicked out. Okay, we're going to get to that scripture. And he showed him the world and all their glory. And Jesus said in verse 10, said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You shall serve. Then the devil left him. Ah, oh, man. So the devil still thinks he's in charge. No, 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 no. He's not been in charge. Now go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I hope you're listening and I hope you're getting something so far. Matthew 28. For me, this is about either Jesus accomplished what God sent him to accomplish or he didn't. It's the, same, it's the same question that I asked Jesus, that I asked the Lord, the Holy Spirit, many years ago, thinking like a military man. This was in the 1990s, late 1990s. I was lying in bed one night, and I was thinking about the Battle of Armageddon, and I was thinking about all the teachings that I've done in the past on the end times, and, you know, all the familiar end time teachings about this is going to happen the three and a half years and then this and then the three and a half years and the battle and all that kind of stuff and I asked and, 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 and I don't want to go into the details now because of time because this is a different teaching but we were taught all these years that you know the rapture now takes place and the antichrist takes over and then we come back again, and then we fight the Antichrist and the false prophets and stuff, and you know, and then there's going to be peace for a thousand years. But then we leave, and then the next three and a half years, the Antichrist takes over again, and then, you know, this is going to happen, and, uh, and, and, and then we are taken all to heaven and the judgments and stuff, and then God sends an angel to go and bind the devil and throw him in the pit. And I was lying in the bed one night and I was asking the Lord this question. I said, were you too weak? And I'm not scared to ask God questions. I said, were you too weak to conquer the devil the first time on the cross? That now you have to come back after the rapture to bind him for a thousand years. And then we leave and then he's released again. And then you come back again, and then we go, and then an angel. What happened on the cross? Either you conquered the devil or you did not. That's my question. 
Okay, I don't want to get into a debate now or anything about it, because I will shoot every holy cow that you've ever been taught. Because I taught that same stuff. But now listen to this. Now in Matthew, so either Jesus did complete what God sent him for, it's done, it's finished. So Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Where does he have all authority? In heaven and on earth. Jesus said so. Now, in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve were given all authority over all the earth to rule and reign. Now, Jesus, as the last Adam, comes and he says, all authority in heaven and on earth. Not some authority, all authority. All authority has been given to me. In other words, the devil, this means that the devil has absolutely no authority in heaven or on earth. No authority. No authority anymore. If you are a child of God, if you are a born again, baptized, Holy Spirit full, son, blood washed son and daughter of almighty God, you've got to understand your position in Christ You've got to understand your position as a son, as a daughter. You've got to understand your position. The devil has no authority anymore. The only authority that he has and the only power he has is the authority and the power that people releases unto him to control. He's got no authority, no power. That's why he will come and try and influence your mind with doubt and with religious stuff so that you don't take your rightful place with authority and power and kick him under his blessed assurance. All right? Luke 10. Go to Luke 10. Go to verse 19. Now this is where we're supposed to become excited. In Luke 10, Jesus says, All authority that is in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now listen what Jesus did in verse 17. Luke 10, 17. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Now, just to quickly say this again. Now, remember Adam in the garden? Remember Deuteronomy 8, to give you the power to get wealth? Remember the devil giving him, showing him the kingdoms and the glory, their wealth? Jesus says, no, 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 you don't understand. And then all authority has been given to me. Now, Luke 10 Verse 18. And he said to them, they come, they said, Oh, the demons are subject to us. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Just stop there before you read further. Remember what I said? I'm setting you up for something. I'm setting you up for another level. So here the devil, the, 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 the other disciples and apostles come. And uh, they are excited. They say, demons are listening to us. Devils are being casted out. They obey us. They listen to us. And they haven't even been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. They are healing the sick. They are raising up the dead. They are casting out demons. And they haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. Stay with it. And Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Now you've got to remember and understand 
that before that, okay, Satan was never an angel in heaven that was in charge of worship. People confuse Satan and Lucifer with one another. Satan and Lucifer are two different in, uh, 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 entities. Two different entities. Satan is a deceiver and a murderer. The word says, from the beginning. He was created a murderer. He was created. I don't want to go into that teaching now. Why, the reason, and how come, and all that. Just listen. He was a cre created murderer, destroyer. The word says, from the beginning. Lucifer was a prince. He was a merchant. He was a rich man from the east. Just get that. We've got to get our doctrines right. But back to Satan. Now look what Jesus... So up to a certain point, Satan had access into the heavenly realms, into the throne room of God. He had access. He was called the accuser of the brethren. That's why he could go before the throne of God and begin to accuse Job. Oh God, that God is taking care of Job. And you know, if God takes his hand away from Job, Job is going to sin and turn his back on God. He's the accuser of the brethren. He had access to the throne of God. But there was a time when the heavens were closed and he no longer has access. He got kicked out so fast that it was like a lightning bolt, and you've heard me say this, and he struck this earth, and now they call it, you know, that it was a meteorite that hit the earth up somewhere in Arizona or in Africa, and it killed all the dinosaurs and stuff. No, it was the devil that hit the earth, man. Okay. Imagine how, how hard he hit this earth. Okay, that's just tongue in, tongue in the cheek. All right. So... He got kicked out like lightning, so quick. It was like, shoom, you're out of here, boy. So now he's got no more access into God's throne room. The word says he's now walking to and fro on this earth. This is now used to be his domain and still is his domain where we give him access, where we allow him to rule and reign. I, I, I remember... Uh, just after we, we, we came to Portable, there was a witch doctor, a Sangoma, that uh, came and opened a uh, practice, whatever you want to call it, Muti, um, just a few houses down the street from where we were living at one stage. And uh, he started advertising, you know, you, you know what they do is come and you can come and get muti for make people fall in love with you. Do you have money problems? I've got this muti for you. And uh, have you got problems in your marriage? I've got this muti for you. Uh, do you want to have men or women to fall in love with you? I've got this muti for you. And all those witchcraft and dollars, uh, you know, throwing and, and, uh, and stuff. And... Uh, it came to my attention. So one day I walked down and I walked past the house. And I started addressing the demons that was working and operating in that house. And I told them to get out of the area. I told them to move. I said, there's not enough place for both of us in this town and I'm not moving. Because I have the authority and I have the power. You are going to move. A week later... He closed his practice and moved. A week later, he moved out of the house. So I want you to understand this. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Now let's carry on reading. This is when I'm setting you up now. Verse 19. Now this is Jesus talking. Behold, I give you. Say that includes me. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all, over all. But you know what? Some preachers, some Christians read it over some. Oh, you know, the devil is powerful. No, he's not. He's a wimp. 
He's a worm. Oh, the devil is loose in my house. Who let him loose? Oh, I want to tell you the devil is working in my family. Who is allowing him to work in your family? Oh, the devil is in my practice. Who is allowing him to practice in your practice? Oh, he's in my business. Who is allowing him into your business? Listen what Jesus, this is Jesus saying, not Vili, this is Jesus. He's, he says, and over all the power of the enemy, not some power, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be enemies hurt you. So when are we going to start laying hold of it is written and begin to use these scriptures as mighty weapons of warfare and say, devil, no, 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 no. You have no authority. You have no power in my house. You have no authority, no power in my business. You have no authority, no power in my body. You have no power with lack, with poverty, with sickness, with the disease, with unhappy. You have no power, no authority. Sickness will not hurt me. Poverty will not hurt me. Lack will not Nothing. Nothing. Like they say, you're in the Western Cape. Nothing. And you've got to sound like a gangster. Nothing. Nothing. I'm going to tell you, nothing. All right? Nothing. You get out of my business. You get out of my house. You get out of my, you go out of my finances in Jesus' name. Now I give you, Jesus, I give you authority to temple on serpents. And you know what? The Bible in the book of Genesis says that the devil came as a serpent. So you've got authority over the serpent. Jesus, okay, let's carry on. And scorpions. These are all demonic forces. These are all demonic forces. Now go to Acts. Acts chapter 1. Now remember what I said about giving you the power to get the wealth because now the wealth was given into the hands of the devil and the devil thinks that he's still controlling it and Jesus said, no, 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 no. You know, devil, get ye behind me and uh, you shall worship the Lord your God. You think you own all the kingdoms, but I want to tell you the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ and so forth. All right, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 1. Let's read from verse Verse 4, And being assembled together with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you take, and then he carries on. Now jump to verse 8, But you shall receive power dunamis the force the ability miracle working power the strength and might when the holy spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me you shall receive power and we have watered the power of the holy spirit down to one or two things the one is the ability to speak in tongues. The second thing is to lay hands upon the sick and see them recover. We now have the power of the Holy Spirit. We now have that anointing. But the disciples did all that stuff without the Holy Spirit. Before they received the Holy Spirit, they healed the sick. They raised the dead. They casted out demons. They had the power to do that. So what is this power of the Holy Spirit that he's talking about? It's the same power that Jesus, or that God spoke about in the book of Deuteronomy. I'm going to give you the power to get the wealth. Because this is a power, remember now, when God made the earth, the earth was supposed to be enslaved to man. But now man is enslaved to the earth. Man is toiling because of a curse. In the sweat of your brow, you're going to work this earth. This is how you know you're going to make a living. You're going to have to toil and sweat so that you can survive, so that you can have a living. That was the curse. All right? 
But now there's got to come a change where the earth is no, where we are no longer enslaved to the earth. It doesn't mean we will not work. It means our work is no longer toiling and sweating to be blessed. It is finding something to do with our hands and God does the rest. God does the multiplication. God blesses the business. God blesses the business where you are working because you are working there and when you leave that business and that business owner is not saved, he's going to feel it in his finances because the one that caused the business to be blessed left. You are supposed to be blessed where you are working. You need to declare it and speak it because it is written. All right? So the power of the Holy Spirit is more than just signs, wonders, and miracles. It is to take back the wealth. It is to take back what rightfully belongs to the sons and daughters of God. And God says, I'm going to give you the power to get the wealth. So now disciples go and wait at Jerusalem because I've got to complete and fulfill the promises that I made in my son Jesus Christ, which is now died and, you know, now all authority and stuff like that. Let's just carry on reading. And he says, and you shall be witnesses to me. Witnesses to me. Not go and testify to people. Not being witnesses to other people. You will be witnesses to me. What does that mean? Hey, look God, I'm fruitful. Look God, I'm blessed. It's a witness to you because you said if you abide in me and my words abide in you. For it is written, man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. So in other words, Jesus, it is written. So you are declaring what you heard the Father say. So I'm saying what the Father says. It is written, if your words abide in me and I abide in your words, I will ask whatsoever I want, whatsoever I desire, not just what I need, whatsoever I desire. And Jesus, you said that now I will go and be fruitful. You said it to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. You didn't say be fruitful to multiply. You said be fruitful and multiply. In the New Testament, Jesus says, go and be fruitful, go and be fruitful. What does it mean? It means we can now be witnesses unto him that the word works. The word works. If I sow, I will reap. If I give, I will receive. The word works. If I declare, it will be manifested. You shall declare a thing and it shall be established. If I speak your words, the word works. I'm a, I, I, I am a witness to you. I'm witnessing to you. I'm showing you. I'm telling you it works. And then you go and testify to the people. Let me tell you about the goodness of God. Oh, man, you know the other day I needed. It, it's, it's, it's like a young lady that started coming to our ministry and that now uh, 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 um, recently. She felt the Lord laid it upon her heart. She hasn't been taught all this stuff. And uh, she felt in her heart that the Lord laid it upon her heart to sow something. And uh, she went to my wife and she spoke to my wife about it. And my wife said to her, okay, go and do it. And, uh, and then she testified in our WhatsApp group that the next day on Monday, she suddenly received a WhatsApp a message from a grandfather. She sold something. And then the grandfather, not knowing about anything, paid a thousand rand into her account. Guess what happens now? Now that was a witness to God that whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Your word is true. Your word is true. Now I testify about it. Let me tell you what Jesus did for me. I sowed and I got. I sowed and I received. Because Jesus said that I will give you all authority. I've given you all authority over all the works of the enemy. Listen, poverty is an enemy. I have authority and power over it. Lack is an enemy. I have the power and the authority over it. Sickness is an enemy. We have the power and the authority over it. Are you getting this? Are you with me? I'm setting you up for something. Now Jesus says, you shall receive power. So what is this power for? It's to get the wealth back into the hands of its rightful owners. But really, how are we going to do that? Well, you start off by sowing, by giving, and expecting to reap 
and to get. Oh, but no, 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 no. I, I, I don't give to get. That's why you're not getting. The word says, Jesus said, give and it shall be given back unto you. A good measure. Good, press down, shake it together. Jesus said, 60, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, and over and above. The word said, it is written, whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. The word says that as long as this earth, it is written, as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest, not harvest time. There's always a time to sow, but your harvest is perpetual. In other words, it's, it's continuous. I did a teaching on that too. So it's a stupid farmer that sows and then sit back and say, but I don't expect to get a harvest. I don't expect to get anything back. No. When I sow, I expect the word of God to work for me. I want to be a witness to him. I want to say to him, your word works. When I ask, I want to receive. I've got some stuff. You can't see it on the camera now. I've got some stuff on the side of my office here and, uh, that I'm trusting God for. And uh, the property that I'm trusting God for. The, uh, the vehicle that I'm trusting God for. The furniture that I'm trusting God for. And I'm looking for another picture of another house. I'm trusting God for another house. And, uh, oh, that's greed. No, that's the promises of God. That's the promises of God. I want to be a witness of the goodness of God because each and every one of them serves a purpose. It's not about greed or lust. I've sown some stuff. I've sown some cars. I've sown furniture. I've sown a house. And above it, I wrote this. You have to believe that your faith is working even if you don't see your harvest yet. You have to believe that your faith is working. I want to be a witness unto him. Because Satan hit this earth so hard. And I don't want to frustrate the price that Jesus paid for Satan to hit this earth so hard. But he's no longer in control of my purpose. He's no longer in control of my destiny. I won't allow him. He might control some other sinner, unsaved, uncircumcised Philistine here in Mossel Bay or in Pretoria or in Joburg or in America, New York or whatever. He may control some of those people, some of those money moguls and uh, mongrel, mongrels, uh, no, no, moguls or what. And, uh, you know, he might be, but, but he's not in charge of me. He's not in control of my purpose or my destiny. God's got a way to get the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. God's got a way of doing it. I just start off by giving. I start off by sowing. I start off by obeying the word of God. I start off by doing what the word of God says. And then I trust God to give me wisdom, to give me understanding, to give me knowledge. God can put a plan in your heart to start doing this. God can take you and tell you you've got to resign from your, put a business plan in your heart and start growing it in your heart. And a prophet can come and say to you, it's time for you to leave your business and start your own business. God can put something in your heart and God can use a prophet to come to you and say, it's time for you to resign and take the offer of that other business. Whatever. Whatever. Or you can stay where you are, where you're working, and trust God to prosper you and to bless you, that when your salary comes, your salary can become your sowing and your giving, and God's got some other resources that He starts blessing you. He's God. He can do it. Is anything too hard for God? No. We limit God. We are the ones that limit God. The devil is not in charge, family. The devil is not in charge. He might control because they give control to him. They submit to his suggestions. They submit to his doings and stuff. They live in sin. They drink. They party. They, they go crazy. They sleep around. They steal. They are corrupt. They do all these things. And, and uh, they are in his control. But they are, he's not in my control. He's not controlling my purpose. He's not controlling my finances. He's not controlling my income. He's not controlling my blessings. God is. I, okay. I have given you authority over all the works of the enemy. Over serpents, over scorpions. All authority. All 
authority. Let me just give you a, 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 what do you call it, an explanation or whatever, of the Greek word all. It's an actually, it's a small word, only three letters, A double L. But if you go and look at the Greek, the original meaning in the Greek, what that little word actually means, it means this, all, everything. That's what it means, everything, over all the works of the enemy. Oh, but you don't know what happened in my life today. Take authority. You don't know what happened at my work yesterday. Take authority. Start declaring you are blessed. Wherever you go, you are blessed. Start declaring doors of favor is opening, uh, opening up for me. Start declaring I am the most blessed person on this planet or on this, in this town at my job or whatever. Start declaring the stuff for it is written. Let's carry on reading. You shall be witnesses to me. Go to chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 38, then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of the Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar of as many as the Lord God will call. So this power of the Holy Spirit, this miracle working power, this dunamis, this authority is not just to do miracles. It's miracle working power. Miracle in your finances. Miracle in your blessings. Miracle in your house. Miracle in your body. It's miracle working power and authority. is for everybody and everyone that is afar off. It's not talking about in Pretoria, in Cape Town, in New York. It's not talking about distance. It's talking about age. It's talking about 2,000 years later on. This power is going to be available to Vili. This power is going to be available to Ansi. This power is going to be available to Willem, to Hendrik, to you, whatever your name. This power is for all who are afar off. This power, this dunamis miracle working power, I'm going to give you the power to lay hold of the well. This power is for everyone that is still afar off, whom the Lord will draw near. It's for you. I'm setting you up for something. Mm. Go to John chapter 14. Jump down to verse 26. But the helper, that's the Holy Spirit, the helper. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Listen carefully what he says. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things. And bring into remembrance, bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. What is happening tonight? What happened on Sunday? What happens every Wednesday night? What happens every Sunday morning? The Holy Spirit, through the teachers, through the preachers, is bringing into remembrance, into your mind, into your remembrance, everything that was spoken by the Father and by Jesus. He's reminding you of it. So now I'm reminding you, it is I, the Lord your God, that gives you the power to get the wealth. Now go and wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power. He's going to remind you of how to lay hold of it. But you start off, as I said earlier, you start off by obeying the word of God. Dies, offering, sowing, giving. You start off by obeying the word of God. And then trusting God to guide you, to lead you. The devil is not in charge of your wealth. He's not. He has given us the authority over what? All the earth. All 
the earth. Jump to chapter 15. Then one more scripture after this. Chapter 15. John chapter, uh, 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 chapter 16. John chapter 16. Let's keep that one. Go to John chapter 16. Look at verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. So this is not a lie. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the paracletos, the Holy Spirit, the promise, the advocate, the intercessor will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Eleven, verse 11, of judgment because, now listen to this, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Listen carefully, the ruler, not the owner anymore. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. So Adam only gave rulership over to the devil. So that the devil can rule and reign. Could rule and reign. But now the ruler is judged. Not the owner. So guess who are the owners? We are together with, with, with the Father and with Christ Jesus. We are the owners of this earth because we are created in His image. He has placed us on this earth. Earth He has given to man. Some men are abusing it. Some men are abusing their authority. Some men are corrupt. Some men are influenced by the devil. But it belongs to man. But those that are ruled by the devil are judged. The ruler of this world is judged. Not the owners, the ruler. Are you getting it? He's judged. Then he says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So we see that truth is progressive because they couldn't handle everything. And even now, you still cannot handle everything that is being taught. Oh, no, no, no. That's my doctrine says this. And now you no, you still cannot handle everything. Jesus shot just about every holy cow that there was to shoot in his days. Let's, let's finish. And uh, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he is, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Now listen to verse 14. John 16. He says, He will glorify me, for he will take off what is mine and declare it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Didn't we just read that all the earth belongs to God and God is in control of it? The earth and the authority. And he placed Adam and Eve on the earth. And Jesus came and said, all authority has been given to me. Now we've got to take back the kingdoms and its glories. And everything the Father has is mine. Does, is it not written? That the gold is mine, the silver is mine. Isn't it interesting that God specifies what it is that is His? Isn't it interesting that He specifies the gold, the silver, the cattle on a thousand hills are mine, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof? Now Jesus says this, he says, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine, whom he, the Holy Spirit, he will now take of mine and declare, show it, reveal it, open it up to you. So now through the Holy Spirit, which is the power, we now have access to everything the Father has. We have access to the gold. We have access to the silver. We have access to the cattle on a thousand hills. It doesn't mean now you're going to become a farmer. It's talking about the wealth of this world. We have access to the glories of these kingdoms. For the kingdoms of this world 
have become the kingdoms in Revelation. We have now access to it through the Holy Spirit. And now through the teachings, the Holy Spirit is revealing to us, showing us what it is that we have access to. We have access to healing. We have access to joy. We have access to happiness. We have access to overflow. We have access to success. We have access to wealth. We have access to whatever it is that God has. We have access to it. Everything that God has, we have access to it. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are seated at the right hand of the Father. He will take off mine and declare it to you. Let's finish. Let's close. Go to Ephesians 3. I want to close with Ephesians 3. I hope you got something tonight. This is just a summary, a recap. There are other things that came out. Sunday, but I trust and believe that there are things that are coming out tonight that didn't come out on Sunday. I want to finish with Ephesians 3. I love Ephesians. The book of Ephesians was written to some of the most wealthiest people in the history of the Bible. They were rich beyond measure. And still they lived as beggars. Now, isn't that ironic? Ephesians chapter 3. Let's go to verse. Let's go to verse. Verse 20. Now to him. Who is able. Say this with me. Say he's able. I just want to get my amplified. Listen to this. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly. Please, God is not a God of just enough. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So there is a power that works in us. There is an authority that works in us that releases and enables. Listen, listen, I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. This God that is omnipotent, that is all powerful, that created everything out of nothing, this God. God can be limited to do things for you in your life because of your attitude, because of your lack of knowledge, because of what you allow religious people and even the devil to influence you in your mindset about Oh, no, 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 no. You know, this materialistic stuff. And it, yet you live in the house. Yet you drive a car. Still you drive a car. Still you wear some nice clothes. And you want to argue about materialistic stuff. But that's another teaching for another time. So just listen to this. Now to him who is able. Say this with me. God is able to do exceedingly. Abundantly. That means more than that you can ask or think. You, can, you cannot even outthink God, man. You cannot even out ask God. Oh, God, I, I, I really, uh, not just do I need a new car, I would like to have a newer car. God, God goes, what? And the angels have to catch God because he nearly falls, fell off the throne. Because there's an economical crisis in heaven. Because, you know, God is struggling to pay the angels. He can't take care of other people's needs and stuff. And that's, that's maybe how some people are seeing God. But this is not what the scripture teaches. It says now to him that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Above all that we can ask or think. You can't even out-ask God. You can't even out-think God. 
You've got to get to God's level. And that's what I'm setting you up for. I want to get you there according to Ephesians 4. To that level. To that measure. According to the power that works in us. You've got to understand the purpose of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you is to allow you to walk, talk, rule, and reign with that authority and power that has been restored on the inside of you when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you got filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. It's more than just Kurama Shaba. It's more than just healing the sick. It's everything that the Father has. Everything that the Father has. According to the power that works in us. To Him be glory in the church. How does the Amplified say it? Now to Him who by and in consequence to the action of His power that is at work within us. His power that is at work in us is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. See how we've limited God to just getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, making it through life, just getting my needs met so that I could just at the end of the month pay my bills. That's survival. That, that is surviving, not thriving. And then the next month you are again a slave to this earth. And then the next month you are still enslaved to this earth. When you are supposed to rule and reign and take back your authority and power over the earth and subdue it and hedge about it, rule and reign it, keep it. This time, don't let it go. Don't let the ownership go. Don't let in the area that you are. Now I want to go back to the teaching that I did and I'm just mentioning it. I'm not going to do it. The teaching that I did a few weeks back and uh, about saviors of your city, saviors of the city. taking authority within your city, laying hold of property within your city. Start where you are at, in your house. God can bless you with a sitting room suite. And you can see it, and you can understand. I, I, I'm going to be a witness to God. And it grows. And then God can bless you with a car. And then God can bless you with a house. And then God can bless you with property. And then God can bless you with another property. And God can bless you with... As long as you understand that, this, that what you are blessed with is also for the kingdom of God. So you're not stingy about it. You sit with four houses. Someone comes your way that's in need of a house. You can use the one house and say to the person, I can set you up for three months while you are looking for a job, until you get the job. I can bless you. You can live in the house. It's fully furnished. And that person will be so grateful and you can tell that person about Jesus and you begin to teach that person what I'm teaching you and you can get that person to declare and that person steps into a good job and then God blesses that person that we can rent his own house and then that house that you own is empty again and it can work for the kingdom of God. But now you are investing into the life. You're becoming a testimony to that other person and that other person is now led to Jesus and now God begins to bless him and he moves from renting to owning and the whole thing just accumulates and grows and so the kingdom of God is expanding it's according to the power that works in us amen it's according to the power that works in us go and read it in the amplified again I'm closing with it carry out his purpose super abundantly far over and above all that we dare to ask or think 
infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. I dare to ask God for property. There's my picture. There's another one. There's what I'm trusting God for. I dare to ask big. I dare to trust God for another house. I dare, according to the power that works in me. I'm setting you up for a higher level of life. But it's going to be according to your faith. It's going to be according to your faith. I don't know if my son can smell this. I don't think so, maybe. But right now, where I'm sitting, I'm smelling my anointing oil. And there's nothing open. There's no anointing oil open or anything like that. Right here where I'm sitting, right here. I'm smelling my anointing oil. Amen. So I see it as a, as a sign of the word that I taught you tonight. Amen. Come on. Close your Bibles. I trust that you got something tonight. Your authority and your power. Don't let any person pull you down to a lower level of life. Don't let them pull you down. To the, you are on this earth. Come on, even Jesus said it to, 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 to Nicodemus. He said to Nicodemus, if I've told you heavenly stuff, how are you going to believe when I tell you earthly stuff? Okay, if, if I tell you earthly stuff and you struggle to believe that, how are you going to believe when I start telling you heavenly stuff? And then he mentioned this. He says, he who came down from heaven, who now speaks to you, is in heaven. So Jesus says to Nicodemus, he says, Nicodemus, while I'm on this earth, I'm in heaven. You are seated with him in heavenly places, although you're walking on this earth, because of your place of authority, because of your power. Don't ever let any other person bring you down to their level of opinions, religious mindsets, and doctrines. Let the word of Almighty God define you. Let the word of God, it is written, tell you who you are, what you can have. Let the word of God tell you. Now you don't have to believe anything that I say tonight. But what you can do is go and study the scriptures that I gave you. Go and sit with the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand it and open it up to you and see what I taught you. Is that what the scripture says? Then believe it. Amen. Amen.